The Valorant economy is probably one of the most important parts of the game, but unfortunately it's often misunderstood or just straight up overlooked. A ruined economy can be tough to fix, costing you precious rounds as the enemy build their stockpile of credits. The good news is the Valorant economy is easy to understand once you've got the basics down, and following a few simple rules will give your team a competitive advantage in almost every round. Here's a breakdown of the Valorant economy explaining how to earn credits, the most common economic strategies, and a few tips to help maintain a healthy economy. Credits are at the center of the Valorant economy and dictate what abilities and weapons you can purchase each round. Players can earn credits in multiple ways, and each team is awarded a set amount of credits at the start of each round. Each kill grants 200 credits, so slaying is a good way to keep your pockets stuffed for the next round. Playing the objective is also important, as planting the spike grants each of your team members 300 credits. Winning a round rewards a team with 3,000 credits for each player, which can help you gather all the gadgets you need and help maintain a lead. The losing team, on the other hand, only receives 1,900 credits, but this does increase with each consecutive round loss. Losing two rounds in a row gives you 2,400 credits, and losing three rounds back-to-back -back gives each player 2,900 credits. This is designed to help losing teams maintain a healthy economy and avoid the winning team from always being better equipped. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. The max amount of credits you can have at any one time is 9,000. Now this provides more than enough to fully buy with credits left over to help your team as needed. If your entire team is nearing that credit limit, that's a good sign you're managing your economy correctly and successfully winning rounds. Spending your credits wisely is important, however. Understanding the main four economic strategies will help your team maintain a strong economy and prevent wasted rounds, but only if your team works together. Most Valorant players are familiar with eco rounds, light buying, force buying, and full buying but these terms can be a bit confusing to new players. Understanding when to follow each strategy is an essential part of winning in Valorant. An eco round is needed when a team cannot afford to fully buy and needs to save all their credits for the following round. Some players will buy pistols or light armor, but the minimum amount for full armor and a rifle is maintained for the next round. 3,900 credits allows you to buy a rifle and full shields and is the minimum you should have saved in that eco round. You should also save credits for the abilities needed to help your team, like smokes and flashes. Light buying refers to rounds where you can afford cheaper weapons and abilities and still have enough for a full buy the following round. This is an excellent choice when your team's economy is unbalanced and you still want to damage the enemy economy with kills. Just remember that 3900 minimum plus whatever other abilities you will need to purchase in the following round. Force buying refers to situations when you need to win a round to avoid losing a match or there's just no reason to save your credits. This is an excellent choice for the final round and a half, as credits do not carry over. Each player should buy whatever they can by spending all their credits as they do not need to save for a full buy. A full buy, finally, is the best possible option for a team, as it allows each player to purchase a rifle, full armor, and whatever abilities they'll need. Building and maintaining your team's economy helps reach a full buy faster, and ensures your team is never more than a couple of rounds away from that full buy. Understanding these four scenarios is important in maintaining the Valorant economy and not following these principles can make it significantly harder to succeed. Teams that do not work together and focus solely on their weapons and equipment will make it easier for the enemy team to win rounds, putting you at an easily avoidable disadvantage. Now, while this might sound like a lot of information to remember, each Valorant match follows a similar pattern, and you'll start to recognize each situation as you gain more experience. Let's start with the first round in any Valorant game, the pistol round. Each player starts with 800 credits and can purchase a different weapon, light armor, and abilities. Players confident in their skills will typically spring for a ghost or a frenzy instead of light armor. Duelists and controllers often prioritize abilities to help their teams enter sites and purchase armor or weapons based on their team's strategy. Spending wisely in pistol rounds is crucial for success and can set you up for the next few rounds or put you at an immediate disadvantage. Spend your credits on items that'll help your team. If you're a controller on your team, it's probably a good idea to buy abilities instead of that sheriff. Your purchases in the second round depend on whether you win or lose that pistol round, and if you're attacking or defending. Winning on either side usually means you should light buy in the second round to avoid losing your advantage. Full teams without weapons can still overwhelm a couple of players on a site, and defenders can still pick off enemies pushing into sites with headshots. On the other hand, it's best to save during the second round in most games if you lose the pistol round so you can fully buy in the third round instead. Winning the second round does present you with another scenario, the bonus round. A bonus round refers to when a team doesn't have rifles or full loadouts but decides to save their credits. Even if you lose this round, you'll still have enough credits to fully buy in the next round. 
Losers should be able to buy in the third round if they saved correctly, meaning they have a chance at redemption. The remainder of the rounds in any Valorant match should fall into any of the previously mentioned scenarios. Here are a few other tips to help keep your economy stable and prevent your team from getting stomped. If you have enough credits to fully buy, but three of your teammates need to save, save as a team. This will level your team's economy and prevent you from not buying in the following round. One rifle without any support is worse than a couple of SMGs and a designated strategy. Consider buying for your teammates if you have the credits to give you a fighting chance in damaging the enemy economy. If your teammate is loaded with credits, ask for a buy, especially if they're getting close to the 9,000 credit limit. The Valorant buy menu lists every weapon price and tells you exactly how many credits you will have in the next round. Remember, 3,900 is the amount needed for full armor and a rifle, and extra credits are needed for your agent's abilities. Make sure to keep tabs on the other team's economy with the scoreboard. Each player's credits are listed by their names, and you can figure out what kind of weapons and abilities they might have if you pay attention. A full team with 3,900 or more credits can afford to buy fully, so expect well-equipped opponents. If they're relatively poor, expect a rush or aggressive strategy as they attempt to force and overwhelm the site. Finally, remember that communication is important to maintaining your economy. Coordinating buys is a simple task and can often make the difference in key rounds. If you don't feel comfortable talking to your teammates, use the voice commands available on the buy menu to send your entire team a message. Start by learning the cost of your agent's abilities and how much extra you will need in a full buy round. Keep track of your team's credits and don't be afraid to call for a save or a buy. For more Valorant content and to stay up to date with everything esports related, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.